Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Heavy Repping. My name is John Tron Davidson, and I'm here once again in our super fancy, very, very good, good test location in the southwest of England. Now, today is a very special video for three reasons. Number one, I'm doing something I haven't done before. Number two, I'm using this wonderful microphone I've borrowed from Tom at No Luck Audio. Shout out to No Luck Audio. And number three, when this video goes out, it will be the first year anniversary of the HR Guild shop. This is a really big deal. Um, I'm very excited about that. Uh, and I'm incredibly proud of everyone that's been involved in the Guild so far. So if you're looking for the best selection of petite picks anywhere in the world, you can find it at the link in the description on the HR site. Thanks very much. In honor of that, I thought it would be a good idea for those of you who aren't aware of such things to do a sort of beginner's guide to the Plout Traverse in the most concise way that I can think of doing that, and that is by using the Iceberg system. Rather than saying that these are, you know, good companies going down to not good companies, or it's no good companies going up to good companies, this is a question of how deep into this game you want to go. I own picks from all these people, and I think it's incredibly important that everybody knows that they're there. However, I know that they don't, and as we press on, you're going to see just how much that's the case. And in all honesty, this video could have been about 30 times the length, uh, but I have narrowed down the triple figures of makers I could have talked about, and on this there are 40. Just as a little thing as well before we get started, those uh, people that are in the heavy repping shop, I'll put a little uh, asterisk next to them, uh, just to make sure you guys are aware of that, because we have some cracking cracking makers in there uh, and if you don't get in there you're daft so we're going to start at the top of the iceberg and go all the way down into the murky murky depths of the plug traverse so without further ado let's go the most easily recognizable pick brand on earth jim started off making uh, capos in glasgow way way back in the day and he developed the nylon plectrum but also sort of really came into his own when he developed the Tortex series in the early 80s. This standardization of that color scheme of color-coded thicknesses for all the plectrums has made them ubiquitous the world over. If you are watching this, you would recognize one immediately. You have definitely played one if you've been anywhere near a guitar. Uh, and really, that is as mainstream as it's possible to be. D'Andrea is listed here because it's not known as much outside of the vintage community and outside of the, the pit community as a whole, just how important D'Andrea have been in the development of the plectrum. Apart from Luigi D'Andrea standardizing uh, pick shapes in the 1920s, they also spent the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s and 70s making picks for just about everyone. So when you see vintage picks, uh, especially in celluloid, a lot of them, especially in the US, they're D'Andrea picks. Uh, there are others, but they were the company, the predominant company making for Fender and Gibson and uh, for themselves and for everybody. It's insane. The legacy of D'Andrea is monumental. They're still very much uh, an ongoing thing today. Uh, making the amazing Proplex series and all the rest of it. So you've probably played these without even realizing, but they've made some incredible stuff, uh, the Delrix series and, and all the rest of it. So they, their place in this particular tier is assured. Now Fender and Gibson are on here as a single entity simply because they're so ubiquitous as the two biggest brands in guitar and have been since, particularly since this whole advent of the electric guitar. Uh, in the early 50s. They have had a huge variety of picks, especially Fender, I've got to say. The most common ones that everybody knows are uh, what are termed as the Fender pick, which is the nomenclature that took over from uh, the 351 being recognized as the Nick Lucas pick uh, back in the 1940s. Fender took that over in the 50s and became the Fender pick, even though the 351 shape had remained the same. Um, Gibson have made all sorts of things mostly known back in the day for their little jazz teardrops and also for the 346 but uh, they're still making picks now uh, in celluloid uh, and black celluloid primarily and they are as well known as you could possibly get your head around so 
very important. The Landstrom shark fin is a pick that everybody's owned at one point or another. Uh, I remember buying them when I was very, very young, but their distinctive designs, or their distinctive design, uh, was developed in Sweden, and it was used by all sorts of bands, especially in the 60s. Uh, the Beatles were purportedly big fans of it. Very, very cool, very, very cool plectrum that was designed so that the little bumpy ridges at the front uh, brushed the strings, creating a 12 string effect. I don't know if anybody ever used it for that, but they're still very much in production today, uh, being made by Dunlop uh, and or Dunlop are making variants thereof and it's one of the most iconic designs uh, perpetuating designs in all of uh, Plectrum history. Dav is mentioned here because it's not even so much that it's super super mainstream more that uh, these picks are something that they're the first picks that a lot of people kind of gravitated towards and then felt that that was their thing now there's been a lot of different iterations of that and indeed i did a plexcon episode on this and the inception of dava which is really interesting in and of itself it's a really really interesting design in the sense that the top section um, and the bottom section are the same thickness but the middle bit tapers in so that as you grip it at the top it'll be nice and loose to give you rhythm stuff and if you go down the bottom it toughens up kind of like a jazz three there's a lot of different variants of it uh with rubber grips and so on but in terms of longevity they've been around a lot longer than you might realize uh, i think it was the mid 90s uh, when they first went into production sort of coinciding with when i started playing guitar so they've always just kind of been there but they're still very much a thing now and I hear them getting mentioned a lot in the pit community, so I thought it was totally fine to have their inclusion here. Um, first company here is Swiss. Now, Swiss Picks is a company run by Pete Punkowski, and he's got endorses like uh, Jason Becker and famously Rusty Cooley, and the picks are all cheese based like the nuclear cheddar and so on and so forth uh these are injection molded uh, he's a big fan of polycarbonate and acetyl very distinctive plectrums uh still very much in production today with quite a quite a wide range of thicknesses and shapes and even though these are quite widely available in the us they're still uh that little step outside of the mainstream and you're starting to get into the cool stuff so i thought they were definitely worth mentioning here vpex and vinnie smith uh, is one of the first names that people think of when they start to get into boutique stuff uh, vinnie started making in the 1980s using uh, acrylic that was used for making fish tanks as he's very fond of telling people uh, and he cuts them using this insane water-based sort of uh, electrified water jet system um vpex whole thing since day one has been acrylic and they made some crazy stuff all the way from your very sensible 346 style jalapenos and medium pointed all the way up to the colossals and the psychos and the insanities and really weird stuff like the nexus uh, but it's been acrylic, acrylic, acrylic all day genuinely one of the first companies I came across to make really huge stuff um, and still available in a lot of shops, but fundamentally not injection molded and also made by effectively one guy. <laughs> so big undertaking. Epo Franken of Chicken Picks uh, started off his brand because he's a big country guy and he wanted to have picks that were very low in string noise, uh, that were very distinctive and also he was a big fan of thicker plectrums so the majority of the chicken pick stuff even though it does go down relatively thin kind of hovers around the two and a half to like four mil mark uh, they were some of the earliest ones that i tried with um higher thicknesses they're closest in plastic terms to stone so if you like that little uh sound that you get and very 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 minimal string noise they're absolutely worth trying Badass 3 is fantastic, the shredder's really good. Gravity uh, is run by a gentleman called Chris Fahey. Uh, Chris, again, is very, very big into acrylic, but he also does uh, some other thermoplastic stuff in the gold series. Now, these picks go anywhere from 
quite thin, like under a mil, all the way up to your six millimeter situation. And they were the very first picks uh, to bear the legend heavy repping when I got them made. Back when heavy repping was just a thing, I used to say, and wasn't this enormous undertaking. <laughs> Uh, but he does a whole load of uh, distinctive shapes, the sunrise, the classic, and so on and so forth, uh, drawing on influence from the past but making it into his own thing. Uh, also offers a couple of different finishes from both polished uh, and unpolished edges, the unpolished one I'm a big fan of, uh, but they're still very much an ongoing thing today. Uh, and again, a one-man operation. Pick Boy is a company based in Japan uh, that started in the mid 60s, mid to late 60s, and they have made th one of the most gigantic catalogues of plectrums that you can possibly imagine. Everything from uh, the carbon fiber based high modulus stuff uh, all the way through to the gear series. They've done horn, bone, wood, really Im incredibly complex carvings, all sorts of stuff. They're still very widely used in Japan uh, and they're available across the world in places like Tomen and so on and so forth, but they are kind of like Japan's Dunlop uh, in the loosest possible sense. The scope of how many models they make still blows my mind a little bit. Uh, they were also some of the earliest picks I had uh, in the shape of the Metacarbonate series, which I've still got uh, and put on Instagram somewhere. So, props, arigato. Now we're getting into the serious water. Winspear Plectrums uh, is run by a gentleman called Tom Winspear, who is a big fan of uh, tech metal and big eight-string player. Now, Winspear makes a lot of things, uh, not just picks, although that is principally what he's known for. He also makes strings and cables and so on. Items like the Gladius and the Battle Axe and the Shiv and so on are very aggressive takes uh, on things like the Jazz 3 and the Jazz XL. However, he has made his own designs. He's a big fan of U-Glass, a uh, big proponent of UHMWPE, which is a common thread as you go further down in this <laughs> iceberg situation. Tom has made a huge inroad uh, into the pit community. He was the first pit maker that I ever saw to sponsor uh, a stage at a festival, which I think was Techfest, if I remember correctly. So if you're into the brutal stuff, go and check them out. The inimitable Alexis Rodeo of Iron Age uh, actually came up as a uh, Harrier jump jet engineer and has made some of the most weapon-centric, militantly refined picks that I've ever come across. Uh, I did a video ages ago on his Megalith Ultra, um, but he's done some really cool stuff with the Parthenon series and with the Imperators. Big heavy use of Kyranite. It was the first Kyranite pick that I used. Kyranite is a hardened acrylic, although I'm pretty confident you'll know that if you're watching this. He's a big fan of metal rivets. He's a big fan of big, thick plectrums, so you're getting into like your 9 mils and all that sort of stuff. But also, he makes a whole bunch of kill switches, famously for people like Charlie Caswell from Buried Alive, for whom he also makes the signature plectrum. Uh, he's made a whole bunch of crazy stuff like Fenrir's Fang and all the rest of it. And to this day, in terms of just the sheer force that comes out of somebody's picks, it is rare for me to come across uh, a company that does it more than Iron Age. Matt Halliday of Stone Age Plectrums, keeping with the age theme, is somebody that trained in a whole bunch of different fabrications but then settled on lapidary, which is the skill of manipulating stone. He's favoured things like primarily agate, uh, but also obsidian and uh, coprolite and things like um, fossilised wood and all the rest of it. The Stone Age sound is typically very breathy but also has crazy note separation uh, because of the way the picks are shaped and also they are one of the hardest wearing things here by some margin. Matt's made some of the best looking picks I've ever seen and the hardest wearing obviously because they're stone but I've dropped quite a lot of them and they've never broken so I can't really say any further than that. Uh, especially if you like the Deng, go and check them out. Now, Rombo is an odd choice in the company of these other makers so far, simply because Rombo uh, do not hand build, they are injection molded. However, they are here because they are 
at the vanguard of new companies doing picks in a mass-produced way using ecologically sound materials and trying to offer a genuine alternative to the mainstream. Um, Rombo is run by uh, Judith and Carlos, uh, who are a couple, and they have made eight models over the course of their tenure, all of which are produced using uh, as refined techniques as they can the coloured ones being used in conventional injection moulding and the black ones being done using recycled landfill material. Now that's a big thing in and of itself, uh, but what they've also tried to do is they've tried to keep the cost down. So a lot of people get very kind of Ooh, about spending money on picks. And it's wonderful to know that there are companies like Rombo out there who are making this stuff that looks incredibly cool and has its futuristic geometry, but also is very much centred on trying to make the more boutique end of the Plexiverse as accessible as possible. Contemporaries of Rombo, Bog Street, uh, the company is run by a gentleman called Paul Holcomb. Uh, Paul was formerly in Navy in the US and he started out playing guitar uh, and discovered that he could never hold on to the picks the way that he wanted to, so he decided that he was going to make his own. They started off by making one of the most <laughs> striking sort of things uh, in the form of the leap which you can see up here after getting an enormous amount of support uh, from the guitar community for that they then developed the axe series which is like a whole other thing major refinement job uh, it's super super clean the way that these are made and again they're trying to keep the barrier uh, the cost barrier down so that more and more people can enjoy these plectrums, which I think is tremendous. Uh, they've just gone from strength to strength, featured all over the place, and it's wonderful to see uh, a company like that doing so well, especially when it's been an enormous labour of love uh, for just one guy. We're into tier four, so here we go. Very much a central figure in the Plectroverse. Brock Little from BHL uh, is in Hong Kong, an Australian gentleman living in Hong Kong. He's made some of the hardest hitting, most understated and refined picks uh, that I've ever come across. Um, primarily focusing on things like UHMWPE, U-Glass and so on. Brock's whole thing has been not only to make these really hard hitting picks but also to act as a sort of mentor for a lot of other people uh, in the trade. He's been mentioned on I think all of the podcasts that I've done with people like Chris from Dragon and Rick Cahoon from Honey and so on and so forth and the range is big stuff, lots of, lots of attack, really hard wearing materials and although he does do limited runs like this sort of pink effold job most of the picks are very functional that's the whole point very discreet beveling very careful he's used materials like torlon and all the rest of it a sort of fulcrum for a lot of people in the game as well as making some wicked picks hawk picks is a gentleman called rob e who's based in the united kingdom and rob makes a lot of speed beveled stuff a lot of mandolin based picks he's also a big fan of the home plate which is a, it's a design that goes all the way back to the burt whedon era and I suppose you could say we go back to the 1930s with Gibson and so on and so forth um, but most importantly he is again building on a relatively small scale but to a very high quality uh, they're some of my favourite picks I've ever owned very very hard wearing um, very distinctive with the bright colours he chooses and all the rest of it and it's a good it's a good spread of stuff uh, especially for those of us uh, who like picks to be firm but not deadly sounding. Dragon's Heart uh, is run by a gentleman called Corey Bell and Corey was in the US military and having spent a long time in the US military when he got discharged he decided he wanted to put all of his effort in something he genuinely enjoyed which was playing the guitar. However, uh, while in the process of putting all of his love into the guitar, he decided that he couldn't find the picks that he wanted on the shelf. A familiar story there. And he came up with the Dragon's Heart. The Dragon's Heart stuff uh, is some of the earliest uh, boutique picks that I owned, like the really hardcore stuff. And he's a big fan of polymidamide, uh, fusing it with things like glass as well as carbon in order to create the original and the Hardened Heart series. The Hardened Heart is 
lethal, which is a fantastic bit of gear. However, he also acknowledges that a lot of people like thin picks and so he developed the wyvern series which are much thinner uh, and based on the same very distinctive trifecta design uh, that you get with the dragon's heart stuff uh, so the idea being that you've got one tip for playing normally one tip for strumming and one tip for shredding honey picks is a company run by rick calhoun and his brother drew who is of apple city hobbies and their whole thing uh, was making picks that wouldn't wear out or would wear out a lot slower than everything else um, but also trying to incorporate older styles like cork grips and so on into their designs while still making picks that are fundamentally theirs now it's very hard to do that in the Plat Traverse because like the pedal community there are only so many you know designs that actually work but what honey have managed to do is to make their own things like the queen bee and so on uh, that are theirs but also actually function as picks and as you can see not the ugliest things you'll ever come across <laughs> wagon picks uh, are mostly known in the jazz world uh, especially in the gypsy jazz world and i will tell you right now for the 3000 plus picks that i've got in the house it is very very rare for me to come across something that has as much inherent violence and as much power uh, as the Wigan Trimus 250 that is pictured up here. Now traditionally Mr Wigan has been very tight-lipped about what his picks are made of so I'm not going to hazard a guess at that but I will tell you that if you are playing Gypsy Jazz and what you are really interested in is malevolent power. There are a few companies that will go quite as hard uh, as Wagon. They do other things like more teardrop shaped stuff, but the stuff that they're mostly known for is your big slap about the face sort of gear. So if you're into that, go and check it out. Hammering mercilessly into tier five. Uh, we're gonna start off with Pigtrum. Now Pigtrum is a company run by a gentleman called Tibor, uh, who's in a band called uh, Gideopolis and Tibor's whole thing was that he wanted to make picks using a plant-based polymer. A lot of companies are trying to move towards this, uh, either by using recycled materials or so on, but rather than having such a high barrier uh, of cost when doing things like acrylic and, uh, and kerenite, uh, his whole thing was, I want to make injection molded picks, so I don't want them to be crazy expensive, but I also want to make them out of this plant polymer so that they are sustainable. Now I've got a lot of time for that, but his whole thing uh, was making a 351, a Jazz 3, and a 346, which is the sort of holy triumvirate of everyday use plectrums. Uh, they come in extra resistant and super eco version, but their first model was the Butt, which is a very, very, very stiff uh, 351, but done in sort of Grover Allman style with higher shoulders and a more tapered bottom end. Uh, he's a big fan of low tunings and heavy stuff, and the picks hit extremely hard, but without costing the earth. So if you're looking uh, to kind of get into this, that's a very good place to start. A guitar builder first and foremost, Kelly Nonis uh, is a gentleman uh, who's living in the United Kingdom and makes primarily Macaferry guitars, but he also makes these incredible constructions uh, using primarily Galilith, which is uh, casein, which is a dairy protein with formaldehyde uh, in it to toughen it up, uh, and also fits them with primarily the old Selmer logo as a brass insert with stingray leather on the back. Now, I've got quite a few of these. Uh, they are all speed beveled for Gypsy Jazz. Um, they're used a lot by swing players, Macaferry players, and guys with little moustaches and so on. Uh, but they are all imbued with both an enormous amount of power and this weird inherent joy that he seems to be able to put into everything. Uh, so one of the, one of the classiest looking uh, pick makers out there but definitely mostly known inside the jazz scene uh, I just thought it was something that was fundamentally worth sharing with all of you crushing the universe from down under is Giacchetto picks uh, now I have all the time in the world for Giacchetto they have made leaps and bounds in this game since their inception really focusing a lot on the heavy scene 
uh, in Australia. However, if you know about the process by which a lot of people make their plectrums, making these unbelievable one-off resin designs and they are all big, they are all brutal, they make some of the largest, most intimidating looking plectrums you've ever seen, uh, but their whole attitude has been we are making a quality product and we are going to keep doing that and we are going to work with people that we're interested in working with and in a community that is besieged by people asking for free stuff uh, to hold your ground and to do the right thing by your product and by your company is quite admirable so if you are in any way inclined towards larger plectrums and especially to huge like cavernous weight go and check out Chiquetto immediate that is an order very much a champion of the natural world Howling Monkey uh, which is run by Brian Stavell in New York uh, out of Rochester makes his picks exclusively exclusively from Tagawa now I've done a whole video on Tagawa which you can watch up here somewhere but Tagawa is in a condensed form it is the nut of the ivory palm tree it's used a lot uh, in coat buttons and so on but crucially it's used in jewellery uh, as an ivory replacement because it looks very much like ivory except there's no dead elephants involved uh, for the longest time the Antonius this weird looking key situation that was the highest rated pick uh, heavyrepping.com in the early days and I still love what they make I love what they make because they're very handsome they're very hard wearing they got their own thing they're all a little bit different the colours are lovely uh, he sent me a hat if you want a material that is going to last but also be ecologically sound and it's never going to leave your hands Tago is just the beans and Howly Monkey is right up there as a company that specializes exclusively in Tagawa if you're not in if you haven't got your hands on those you're mad just sort your life out honestly so we're going to travel to France now and talk about Ricky Le Plectrier. Uh, Ricky makes um the wild stuff he's mostly known for the titanium thing uh, like these insane sort of watch design style jobs with little tiny cogs in uh, Ricky's made a huge host of stuff he's used bone he's used Kyronite he's used Altem uh, black Altem which is something I'm a big fan of um, but mostly crafting these mad 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 uh, looking uh, sort of steampunk things now he has made some models which were a bit confusing like the gab which isn't made anymore uh, but if you are looking for the highest level of attention to detail and especially if your pick must be titanium and contain clock parts he is your guy so go and check him out immediately entering tier six we have zen zen is a gentleman called duncan uh, duncan is uh, a incredibly prolific pick maker although he has a series of shapes that he does they are all effectively one-offs uh, which is very common in this scene but at the same time to have the scope of the one-offs that he does is mental uh, I have seen him do three five fives uh, uh, to the most unbelievably almost nightmarish degree in how pointy they are uh, his callus is, a th is this insane bevel thing I've got some of his earliest pieces and to see where he is now and how far he's pushing this form, it's just, it's a way over there. It's a way over there somewhere. When people talk about the batik thing and they talk about people going away out, zen, no messing. Next up we have Plex. Plex is run by a gentleman called Pedro Scassa. Uh, Pedro lives in Italy and he's an architect, but he makes these unbelievable uh, Manouche and Gypsy Jazz picks however I am not a gypsy jazz player but his models like the Xana and so on have been some of my favourites since I started doing this uh, nearly four years ago uh, incredibly <laughs> what I would describe as fundamentally discreet and very quiet unassuming sort of plectrums but some of the most fun you'll ever have big fan of cellulose acetate big fan of all time does a whole bunch of stuff in Tagawa as well but really the sort of Delrin Delrin Ultim uh, celluloid acetate uh, 
sort of triumvirate is his big thing. If you're in any way into jazz or you just like a smooth, uh, very refined plectrum sound, go and check him out immediately. Just superb. Days Atomic Picks is based out of Colombia. Uh, this is going way back to the first first Christmas that I was doing the rep. Um, they were the first picks to turn up uh, where he was using all sorts of crazy compounds and never seen. His big thing at the moment, uh, apart from the Secret Wood series, which is like a polyester resin wood cross, uh, is also to do a lot of 3D printed stuff. Now, 3D printing is still essentially in its infancy in the Plectroverse uh, because of lots of reasons, but Daniel's figured out a very clever way of doing it and making these incredibly distinctive um, very striking and very tough plectrums. So if you are looking for that and you want something where you every time you pick it up you go go and check out this Atomic immediately. It'd be crazy for you not to do that. Um, really just constantly pushing forward. Makes furniture as well um, with 3D printing because yeah. Next on the list we've got Isetti. Now those of you who are familiar with Mrs. Smith, uh, the octogenarian but not really um, Ibanez-centric shredder, will have seen Isetti, whether you know it or not. Uh, the Isetti stuff is primarily very bulbous and speed beveled. I've got a whole bunch of them here which uh, he very kindly sent to me, uh, using all sorts of different materials. And they have a very slick, um, very individual feel to them I can understand why they're used for shred but the, there's a sort of like this like urgency <laughs> when you're using them uh, so if what you want is speed 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 go and check a set out straight away uh, they have some of their really big lad stuff like the really big uh, grey piece that's up here it, it doesn't look like it'd be able to move worth the damn you think it's like Vader but it's not it's like Scott Hall so um, go and check out Seti fabulous stuff moving a little bit more into the avant-garde side of things this is the Raptor uh, the Raptor is actually at its core a 3mm acrylic plectrum it's designed in the United Kingdom uh, it's been made for a long time uh, and as far as I can tell it is still very much available I have only met one person who uses that as their main pick because it is very weird. However, there's always a place for all things in the Plectroverse. The idea basically is that you have uh, three different tips for playing three different ways uh, for single note stuff and for strumming and so on. But there's very, very few pieces out there in the world that look like this. Uh, it comes in white, red and blue. They are all the same thickness and they're all made from the same material. Uh, very interesting, very interesting construction, uh, but I think it's really cool. Difficult, but cool, and that's what you want. So in tier 7 we're in some pretty hardcore stuff, uh, the first of which is Mean Tone. So Michelle Neeson uh, of Mean Tone is a lute player, but also has come up in the last year to make some of the best finished, most varied uh, and most vintage centric picks you'll come across uh, outside of the vintage community. One of the hard things with vintage picks is making a lot of the designs viable for the modern era because a lot of them, especially the older you go, when you go into the early uh, sort of 20th century, a lot of them were still coming very much out of mandolin before the guitar kind of came up to prominence in the Nick, in the sort of golden age Nick Lucas era. Uh, but what he's done is taken a lot of inspiration from old Gibson models and so on and so forth and brought them up to date uh, using resin, uh, using um, Galileth uh, and it's and Fordite and that sort of thing and some of them genuinely they're just picks I would use all the time. Valley Picks uh, is a gentleman called Jean and he is based in La France and makes exclusively from uh, animal products. So he's making from bone and horn, uh, cow bone, deer antler, ram's horn, cow horn, that sort of thing. Now I'm a huge fan of these. Uh, I'm also a fan of the fact that uh, the supply of this material doesn't need to come from living animals, which is 
rather important. Uh, but the bone stuff, it's expertly finished. The Asymmetric series is something I'm a big fan of. Uh, the Deer Antler one that I received recently is superb, but the bone one, super, super hard wearing, very, very neatly finished, very distinctive bevels in the sense that they're not super sharp, they're quite tapered. Uh, and you get this um, very kind of austere, present sort of sound to them. They're not like the that you get from VPix or the sort of very, um, you know, tie off bow tie down the sides that you get from um, that you get from a company like Plex. It's really quite measured, uh, but again, they're still fairly unknown. Uh, which I think is a great shame. So go and if if any of this appeals to you, go and check them out straight away. Your man Anthony at Ace Performance is a chemical engineer by day, but by night he makes the hardest wearing picks uh, that are non non stone, non metal in in the community. There's absolutely no way around that. Um, Ace Performance started out making quite thin plectrums because of the super secret material they use. Uh, but he's graduated up to making really heavy stuff. Uh, the Force Push, which is his sort of principal model, is comfortably my go-to for most of the stuff I do. Uh, insanely hard wearing, sticks to your fingers. They look like, and I've, I've said this to the man himself, so I don't have a problem saying it here, they look like nothing. But man alive, do they get in there like so hard absolutely mad uh, also uses a lot of Teflon it's a big Teflon fan uh, which is great for those of you who have uh, damp hands and really does stick tons and tons of power very little string noise so if that appeals to you or you just like the understated thing go and check him out straight away we don't use the term prodigal very often uh, in the Plectroverse, but because James Romanoff at Northern Ghost is so young I'm going to use that term uh, James has Got he got started effectively a little bit just before the shop opened uh, and celebrated the anif the first anniversary of Northern Ghost as a brand on the twelfth, which was when this video comes out, like the Saturday before. He's drawn a lot of inspiration from older styles, particularly from uh, old uh, mandolin double end picks, which have manifested in things like the Uno. But he's come up with his own designs like the Gravestone and the Coffin Jockey and all the rest of it. Um, primarily focusing on things like acrylic uh, and Altem, he got his start with bone, does all of his shaping by hand, which if you see the finishing that's up here is just, and when I say by hand, I mean, Pick, pick in a vice with a file and sandpaper old school way of doing it like old school petite way of doing it um, but really really handsome huge range of stuff, they're deeply affordable if you want an in and you want to take that next step up and you want to support a tiny tiny maker who should be known like all of these people, should be known all over the place, go and check out Northern Ghost that's a must Nads from Arcanum had his whole range inspired by his deep, deep love of tabletop gaming, Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, he actually makes body casts for the National Health Service by day, uh, but in the evenings, when he's not rolling dice, he's making brutal looking picks uh, with his own flair based off the classes from D&D. Uh, big fan of Acre Lester, uh, big fan of Tagua, started making his own resins, um, he's made some ridiculous stuff. His new Chimera series, which is the half resin, half Tagua blends, just honestly crazy, crazy gear. Great finishing, great bloke. Everybody should have one. If you're not checking him out, why are we talking? Come on, go and sort your thing out, honestly. So as we go into tier eight, please bear in mind that, as I said earlier on at the start, this list could have been three, four, five times longer just with the stuff that I've got, never mind the stuff that I don't have um, but of the of the people here these are the least well known and I would like that to change um, so 
just before we get into it, make sure that I, I've left, I've put links up to everybody's Instagrams and stuff uh, on the on the page and they'll all be down in the description. If you are in any way interested in this, if you're anywhere near this video, please go and check these people out uh, because the work that goes into it is, is ridiculous. So that being said, let's go to the final layer. Gabriel Washerman from Depic Argentina is a gypsy jazz player, a very frightening gypsy jazz player. He makes these contraptions, and contraption is the word I'm going to use, uh, using PVC, uh, the type of PVC that's used for water pipes. And his whole thing was, I want to be able to switch between finger style uh, and flat pick style, predominantly for gypsy jazz, but I want to be as secure as possible. And he came up with his own way of doing it. This is the outer reaches of the Plexiverse. This is the stuff that is avant-garde, um, really, really like out there. The whole having things attached to your hands thing is not new, but I have never seen anybody make such an elaborate piece with screws and rivets and all this sort of stuff to make these <laughs> to make these picks mad power just stupid amounts of power um, it works perfectly for his style I'm a big fan of these uh, I love the Kybalion I think the Virtuoso is fantastic as well he does them in wood um, which is less common but just so far out like a way 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 over there out the door down the corridor sort of thing um, Depix in a field of its own so if you think that's cool go and check him out straight away Woodo is run by a gentleman called David Stalter and he is just really getting his start in the game uh, he works in the health service uh, by day in Germany and he's a big fan of Rich Light of which I'm also a fan and a big fan of Brass and of Macarta. Uh these picks have only just kind of come on the market in the last few months uh, and I've been playing them tons and tons and tons uh, he started off making much smaller wooden pieces uh, the rich light has become more dominant and he started to move into Kernite and Galileth but with his own uh, sort of inserts and all that sort of thing and he favours this asymmetric style they're incredibly elegant very very handsome the brass gives it this extra heft they're huge inserts as well uh, that go all the way through the body. Totally worth investigating, not crazy money, uh, especially for the work that goes in. So Widow all the way, also available in the heavy repping shop. Katori Works uh, is a very small, very odd company uh, out of Japan who also make things like um, camping stoves in the shape of pigs, uh, but they made a platform called the Lockpick, which is designed as a 346 style that's designed to clip over your tuner stems and they also made the silent and the super silent uh, the silent I did a video on uh, some time ago and it's the thinnest pick I own at just shy of 0.1 of a millimeter it was developed uh, so that it could be used in Japanese housing where there is uh, an awful lot of uh, you've got very very small uh, enclosed spaces and you can't make a lot of noise that was the whole idea behind it they've now come out with the super silent which is a fancier version of that um, so if you want to play guitar and make almost no noise whatsoever but still be able to engage in what you're doing Katori is the company for you Sonalux uh, is a company based in the United Kingdom and they make one of the weirdest picks I've ever come across uh, the Pletraverse has a huge diverse array of weird stuff uh, but this is its own thing very much so and if you want to use it it's got a metronome built in uh, that comes off of these lights and you can use it as a normal platform if you want to it's also the only pick I have with a circuit board in it uh, it runs off a little lithium ion cell and the body I believe is 3D printed um, but truly a strange thing and it's the only pick they make but it, very 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 cool I'm going to be doing a video on that later on so especially for videos and stuff what a thing uh, and you don't get any picks with metronomes built in so the world of tomorrow so the final company on this list is Zufoy uh, Zufoy is a company that was run by a gentleman called Malta Sadler and he was one of the first people I got talking to when the wonderful Scott Connor gave me uh, a list 
of people to contact that he and a friend had amassed over a number of years, which got me started uh, with heavy repping and without which I wouldn't have made the inroads I have made. Um, on that list was Zufoy and I contacted Malta and said, uh, I've got this pick site and I'd love to review some of your stuff. If you would like to send me a pick, that would be great and I'll do a feature on it and so on and so forth. If you don't, I'll buy some later. That's totally cool. He sent me everything he'd ever made, prototypes, and a prototype, but prototypes that he'd hand cut, and also a material that he'd been working on called Maltex. And I was in constant correspondence with him uh, until one day his emails started getting less frequent and he was in hospital and sadly passed away. Uh, during our correspondence. I'm very, very sad I never got to interview him. His stuff is wild. <laughs> Absolutely crazy. They were the first picks I played in this whole journey. The first picks I played that really made me feel like my own player. Um, the Go, which is a pick that he tried to unsuccessfully try to crowdfund. Uh, was designed to give as much control over to the player as possible with the least amount of string noise. It's a very weird offset little thing. You can only hold it one way. It doesn't work other ways. It's made from black ultim and regular ultim. There's nothing... I've come across other things in a similar area, but nothing that's actually like it. He also developed the Rost, which was used briefly by um, Neil Rogers. Uh, how the hell he managed to get it to him, I've no idea. Uh, it's basically a pick designed exclusively for playing light funk, and it's made in a wireframe construct. Uh, as you can see up here, it's incredibly fragile. Uh, they were injection molded, they were made in very, very small numbers, uh, and he also had the um, the pick and the daub, and which were made out of this vulcanized rubber stuff, which were really uncomfortable and didn't work very well. Uh, but he he embodies what the spirit of the Pletcherverse is about, which is, I don't see what I want on the shelves, and so I'm going to make it, even if it makes no sense. So if you have watched this and you are this deep into this thing and you have any interest in this whatsoever, his is the stuff. I don't even think it's available anymore. Um, but in fact, I'm pretty sure it's not. But of all the of all the makers, he is the least known. I've only come across a handful of people in my travels throughout the community that know anything about this guy. Uh, I'm doing a piece on him for and for later times when I've got time to do it properly and it is the fundamental of everything that's here so if you've if you've got anything out of this thank you Malta I'm sorry you're not here to see your work being celebrated so that is the beginner's iceberg uh, guide to the black traverse I hope you've enjoyed it uh, if you've got any questions please feel free to hit me up on Instagram uh, at heavy repping go and visit the site we've got news reviews interviews articles uh, a whole section just on Japan uh, and Japanese artists uh, the shop is massive we've got 20 odd makers in there from all around the world uh, making all the stuff stuff you can't even dream about and like I said I could have made this list many times over but I'm going to break it down into different categories and designs and all that sort of stuff so it was actually quite a lot of fun to do um, happy birthday to the shop from me um, and I hope you're having a wonderful day uh, please subscribe and like and all the rest of it if you're in any way interested in the Petroverse and in the meantime my name is John Tron Davidson. This is heavy repping. And just remember, if you're not sure what to do in life, rep hard, rep heavy, and I'll see you soon.